والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طحاها ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها كذبت ثمود بطغواها إذ بعث أشقاها فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقياها فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقياها فكذبوه فعقروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يخاف عقباها صدق الله العلي العظيم جزاك الله برضه إيجاز إن شاء الله we would now continue the program with the recitation of salam I would like to call upon brother Danish to come and present the salam with Allah salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad مرتبہ بلند آواز سے درود پڑھ دیں محمد و آلِ محمد پس لیا ٹوٹ گئی زخم چھپایا نہ گیا پسلیاں ٹوٹ گئی زخم چھپایا نہ گیا درد اتنا تھا ہے درد اتنا تھا 
کہ حیدر کو برایا نہ گیا پسلیاں ٹوٹ گئی روکے حسنین کو دی فاطمہ زہرہ نے صدا روکے حسنین کو دی فاطمہ زہرہ نے صدا جلتا دروازہ آئے جلتا دروازہ جو فیضہ سے ہٹایا نہ گیا پسلیاں ٹوٹ گئیں اور ایک ظالم تو یہی کہتا رہا عمر تمام ایک ظالم تو یہی کہتا رہا عمر تمام ہے جتنا زہرہ کو ستانا تھا ستایا نہ گیا فصلیاں ٹوٹ گئیں ہر جیسے جلتا ہوا دروازہ گرا زہرہ پر جیسے جلتا ہوا دروازہ گرا زہرہ پر اس طرح سے آئے اس طرح سے کسی بی بی پہ گرایا نہ گیا پسلیاں ٹوٹ گئیں اور ہاتھ پسلی سے ہٹاتے ہوئے کیوں روئے علی ہاتھ پسلی سے ہٹاتے ہوئے کیوں روئے علی اور پھر ہاتھ کیوں زہرہ کا ہٹایا نہ گیا پسلیاں ٹوٹ گئیں اور مرزا غیروں کی نہ لگ ہے مرزا غیروں کی نہ پڑ جائے جنازے پہ نظر مرزا غیروں کی نہ پڑ جائے جنازے پہ نظر دن میں زہرہ کا جنازہ یوں اٹھایا نہ گیا پسلیاں ٹوٹ گئیں زخم چھپایا نہ گیا پر محمد والے محمد صلی اللہ
صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعسومين لا سيما بقية الله عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم My respected elders, respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the bottom of our hearts for giving us another incredible opportunity together to remember one of the members of the Ahlul Bayt alayhimu salam Once the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa salam was sitting with his companions and he said to them Badiru ila riyadu al-jannah rush towards the gardens of paradise. So this took the companions by surprise. Some of them asked the Holy Prophet, where are the gardens of paradise? To which the Holy Prophet of Islam replied that any gathering where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, where the members of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim wasalam are mentioned, the reality of that gathering is it's one of the gardens of paradise. And especially when it comes to the remembrance of Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah alayha, that gathering has a spe special status amongst all the members of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim wasalam. Many of our spiritual scholars would say that when a gathering for Fatima to Zahra is mentioned, all the attention of the members of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim wasalam are towards the participants of that particular majlis. Undoubtedly, my respected brothers and sisters, us gathering here, these humble contributions of ours in respect of the Holy Lady, in respect of the part of the Holy Prophet of Islam, will have certain effects in our spirituality, certain effects in our journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, to accept this humble gathering of ours, and we pray to Allah, inshallah, that our 12th Holy Imam, Imam al-Hujjah, ajjalallahu ta'ala, farajahu sharif, is pleased with this gathering of ours. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa ajil farajam ahsantum. The topic that we have for tonight, inshallah, is titled Lady Fatima to Zahra, the manifestation of Al Kawthar. And the way we want to, inshallah, address this topic is by looking into Suratul Kawthar. It is a surah that is uh, uh, one that, inshallah, most of us are very familiar with. A lot of us, inshallah, have memorized the surah. If we haven't memorized the surah, then, inshallah, by the end of tonight, you will have memorized the surah. Some of us, most of us, perhaps know the meaning of the surah. But tonight, inshallah, in respect of the Holy Lady, we want to delve a little deeper into the meaning of Suratul Kawthar. Let's begin, inshallah, by looking at a few quick facts about Suratul Kawthar. It is the shortest surah in the Holy Quran, chapter 108 of the Holy Quran. It is the shortest surah of the Holy Quran. It only has three ayat. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. Fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Inna shani'aka huwa al abtar. It is the shortest surah of the Holy Quran. According to one count, it has 10 words, around 10 words in the, in, in the surah. So a very short surah. It is a surah, according to most Mufassirin, that was revealed to Rasulullah 
during the first part of the prophetic mission whilst Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was in Makkah so it's one of the earlier surahs that were revealed to the Holy Prophet and like most of the surahs that are found in Juz Amma which is towards the end of the Quran Surah Al-Kawthar also revealed in Makkah is also characteristic of very short ayat so if you want to know for example as a general rule which is a surah that's revealed to the Holy Prophet in Makkah the first 13 years of the prophetic mission how would we know as an easy general rule? We'd find the ayat are very short. But these short ayat does not mean that they lack in meaning. They are jam-packed with the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala found in Juz Amma. So the second thing is, it is revealed to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Makkah. Quite interesting as well. It only has 10 words. Surah Al-Kawthar only around 10 words. Uniquely, when it comes to Surah Al-Kawthar, four words out of the ten are only found in Surah Al-Kawthar in the Holy Quran. Out of the ten words, four words in that particular form are only found in Surah Al-Kawthar. Which are the four unique words that we won't find anywhere else in the Holy Quran? Number one, the word Al-Kawthar. In that form is only found in Surah Al-Kawthar. Number two, Shani This word shani is only found in Surah Al Kawthar, number two. Number three, the third word, nahar. rabbika wanhar. This wanhar, nahar, is uniquely only found in Surah Al Kawthar. And number four is the word abtar in itself. Inna shani aka huwal abtar. These four words, out of the ten words in Surah Al Kawthar, are only found in Surah Al-Kawthar, miraculously, uniquely. And this is one of the ijaz of the Holy Quran, my respected brothers and sisters. It's one of the linguistic miracles of the Holy Quran. Because any time a surah or an ayah was revealed to the Holy Prophet of Islam, they would say that this individual, this messenger, so-called messenger, has forged the Quran that he has forged the Quran, he has copy pasted and plagiarized it from somewhere else. So Allah then says, Fatu bi suratim min mithli. If he has copy pasted, if he has plagiarized, why don't you bring one of a surahs like this? And we have given you the shortest surah as a challenge in Surah Al Kawthar. Three ayat, ten words, out of which four words are unique in this surah. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends this guarantee. Qul, lawi nij, tell these people who are accusing you. Lawi nij tama'atil insu wal jinn. If all of mankind and all of the jinn would gather their resources together. An ya'tu bi mithli hadha al-Quran. And their only purpose was to unite all these resources, to bring all their intelligence, to bring a like of the Quran. They will never be able to bring a Quran like the one that has been revealed to the Holy Prophet of Islam. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajam. So that's the second thing that is unique about Surah Al Kawthar. Another thing unique, my respected brothers and sisters, in these short three ayat, the Holy Prophet of Islam has been addressed directly or indirectly five times. I don't want to go through the, each and every letter where the Holy Prophet is mentioned. But five times Allah is addressing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which indicates, Allah is indicating in this surah that the axis of revelation and the axis of the contents of this surah are all around the personality of Rasulullah. Meaning we have revealed the surah specifically for you. Five times in this short surah, the Holy Prophet of Islam has been referenced. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajum. And when it comes to the context of this surah, why was it revealed? It was revealed, number one, all at once to Rasulullah. And why was it revealed? It was revealed to console the heart of the Holy Prophet. As we know in history, anytime that Rasulullah would be blessed with a 
a son, a baby boy, this son of the Holy Prophet would never live long, would die, would pass away. Right? And Rasulullah here would come and say that I'm bringing a religion that would revolutionize the way mankind lives their lives through, to the end of time. This is a religion that will spread to the end of time. Now, when the people of Makkah, these ignorant people, would listen to words like this from the Holy Prophet, they'll say, who is there to continue your legacy after you? You have come with these big ambitions, but who is there who's going to continue your legacy? So they would mock the Holy Prophet, that you have no progeny to continue this legacy of yours. Now, the context of revelation, particularly of Surah Al-Kawthar, is Rasulullah, according to one hadith, was coming back from the burial of one of his sons, either the name of Qasim or Abdullah, one of the sons. Now try and imagine how painful a moment this is for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is just coming back from burying his beloved. As soon as he comes back and he, as he was walking back to his house, a person by the name of Asi bin Wa'il mocks the Holy Prophet of Islam that you are abtar. This is almost adding salt to the wounds of what the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is suffering. That at this particular moment, such a sensitive time for any human being, this individual taunts and mocks the Holy Prophet. What does Abtar mean? Abtar literally means an animal whose tail has been cut off. This is a language that is being used to the most beloved of God. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we'll see in this surah, has a zero tolerance policy to anyone mocking Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah immediately intervenes. And these words would hurt the Holy Prophet of Islam. That, Ya Allah, how can I communicate with these people? Look at the mocking, look at the taunts that I am experiencing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals Surah al -Kawthar. Inshallah, we want to try as much as possible, go through a word-by-word -word meaning of this beautiful surah. If you can help me with a loud salat, ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farajum. And the way we'll go about it, inshallah, is we'll highlight or circle the words that we are discussing so that it's easier for all of us to follow. So the first word in this surah is inna, which in Arabic means or rather in English is translated as verily, we. So it has two uh, words in English. Inna means verily, we. A'atayna kal kawthar. Verily, we have granted you al kawthar, if we were to translate it. Question number one. Who is granting Rasulullah kawthar? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is Allah one or is Allah plural? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. So why the expression, why is the pronoun that has been used here a plural first person pronoun? Why hasn't Allah said, I have granted you al kawthar Instead, we have granted you al kawthar And this is an expression that we have seen, we come across so many times in the Holy Quran, and it has a very strong aqaidi point to it. What is this inna? Does it mean there are many gods out there? Is it against Tawheed? for example. No, this inna, my respected brothers and sisters, is an expression in several languages, in Arabic, in English, in Chinese, in Hindi, in Malay, where when you use a plural first person, it gives an indication, an impression of sovereignty and might. It's an expression in English, in Arabic. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we have granted you, and Allah has used this in several places. There are four surahs, at least four surahs, that start off with inna. Maybe we can jog your memory, and if you can try and bring up a surah in your minds, inshallah, that starts off with inna. Ahsantum, ahsantum. One of the surahs that we know in Juz Amma is, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Surah Al-Qadr. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Meaning we, meaning Allah is saying, I with my sovereignty, with my might, with my greatness, is describing something, an action that's also great. Right? So a great being is describing a great act that's emanating from it, from him. So, inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. This revelation of the Holy Quran on laylatul qadr is a great act from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, Surah Al-Fatih 
إنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا talking about the conquest of Mecca when the Holy Prophet of Islam walks into Mecca and he's now the king of Mecca after so many years of persecution Prophet Sallallahu walks into Mecca this was a victory for the Holy Prophet and for the Muslims Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is describing this event as great who facilitated this victory for the Muslims and for Rasulullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mean inna fatahna verily we have granted you O Muhammad and the Muslims a great victory that's the second surah when Allah dispatches his prophets as well as divine guides inna arsalna nuhan ila qawmihi surah nuh the first ayah verily we have sent down nuh to his community this dispatching of divine guides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a lot of pride in it this is a great act by a sovereign might. Now, this is not only in Arabic, my respected brothers. You know, Margaret Thatcher, who was the then Prime Minister of the UK, I think towards the end of the 1980s, towards the end, talking about this usage of we, in a press conference after she, one of her sons or daughters had given birth to a child and she had become a grandmother, she goes to the, in public and says, we have become a grandmother. It's one person. But she thought that she is so-called great, indicating sovereignty, indicating might. So this we in these four languages that I mentioned is known as the royal we. And we also find it very commonly used in the Holy Quran. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farajam. The second word in this first ayah is inna a'atainaka al kawthar. Verily we. So inna, the first word means verily we. Now, quite interestingly as well, in a'ataina, if you were to just take a'ataina and translate it, it would say, we have granted you. So the question that we could humbly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, why have you repeated we in this ayah? So if we were to translate this literally, we would say inna means verily we. A'atayna means we have granted. So there is a repetition here of we. Why does someone repeat something generally in speech? It's to emphasize that this action is definitely coming from me. This great thing that I did, who did it? I, it was me, I did it. You are emphasizing that you are responsible for this act. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it clear, crystal clear to the Holy Prophet and all those around him that this kawthar that we are granting to you has indeed come from us, from me, from nobody else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizing this so that it is crystal clear that this particular action has emanated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'atayna. We want to have two points about this, my respected brothers and sisters. A'atayna, literally in English, if you want to translate it, the tense of this a'atayna is a past tense. That verily we gave you al kawthar Now, Long story short, Al Kawthar, according to our Shia Mufassirin, is none other than Fatima al Zahra. Sallallahu alayha. Question When this surah was revealed to Rasulullah, Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Fatima al Zahra sallallahu alayha, was not born. So a past tense does not make sense for argument's sake. We're not challenging the words of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. A past tense here does not make sense. No, this is the linguistic beauty of the Holy Quran. Another nuance that we see in the Holy Quran, that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used a past tense verb, it is an indication to the readers and to the listeners that this event will guaranteed come to pass in the very short term. Similarly, we find this expression when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the Day of Judgment. In Surah Al-Waqi'ah, the first ayah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, إِذَا وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةِ When the great event passed, إِذَا وَقَعَتِ Past tense. 
the day of judgment hasn't come, meaning that it is so guaranteed that this event will come, it's as though it has already happened. إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا Literally, when the earth shook with the terrible shaking. Ya Allah, the earth hasn't shaken with the terrible shaking yet. This is describing the events just before the day of judgment, an event that's yet to come. But the past tense verb has been used because this event is inevitable in its occurrence. Guarantee. Inna a'atayna ka al kawthar. Verily, we gave you, which means we will most certainly give you a great abundance. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Ma salli ala Muhammad. وَآلِ مُحَمَّدُ وَعَجِّلُ فَرَجَمُ Another interesting thing about this أَعْطَيْنَا My respected brothers and sisters, inshallah, you are patient with me as we go through these words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَا كَا This كَا means we have given you, Ya Rasulullah. The quality of a gift depends on two things. One, who is the giver and who is the receiver. A great gift, a high quality gift, an abundant gift, the receiver of that gift needs to meet these conditions as well. It's coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, it's abundantly good. It's a high quality gift. It's a unique gift that Allah is bestowing. But who is he giving it to? The recipient also must be capable of receiving this gift. In this ka, this letter ka, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting the status of Rasulullah. That nobody has the qualifications, no one has the quality in himself to receive this particular gift that we are giving you. You are the only qualified recipient of this particular gift. Meaning if we are giving you Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha, it can only come from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجه. Now we want to go into inshallah this word, last word in the first ayah, al kawthar. As we said, it is a word that is unique in the Holy Quran, has not been mentioned anywhere in the Holy Quran. What does al kawthar literally mean? And we want to find out inshallah how have the other Muslims interpreted this surah. What does al kawthar mean? What does it come from? Kawthar comes from the root letters of kathara, which is kathir, right? Kathar means a lot. Kathir is already a lot, but kawthar is like almost an exaggerated form of a lot. When you want to talk about an abundance of, abundance of goodness, kawthar has been used. So it's the hyperbole of kathir. Now, what are the interpretations of kawthar according to the Sunni school of thought, the Shia school of thought. Almost 27 interpretations have been given about Al Kawthar. Out of these 27, Allama Tabatabai says that there are only two of them that have, have a narration that indicate their meaning. The rest are all opinions that people have given to try and justify what this kawthar means. So if you were to open, for example, the books of tafsir of non-Shi'as, for example, you'll see a long list like Imam Fakhr al-Razi, who is one of the most prominent Sunni mufassirin. Almost 15 interpretations he has given. Where have you gotten this from? What are the evidence for these, muf uh, these, these uh, interpretations? There are no evidence for this. It's usually arbitrary, it's more opinion based. However, Al Kawthar is a very generalized term that includes a lot of things. And inshallah, we want to discuss or mention a few of them. One of them that we have a hadith for is Kawthar is the name of a river in paradise that we've heard of. This is a river that Rasulullah describes as being sweeter than honey and whiter than milk, and it is reserved for those who have the love of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim wa salam in them, inshallah, all of us. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The other uh, meaning of kawthar, abundance, is the number of scholars that are found in the Ummah of Rasulullah. I'm just mentioning some of the main interpretations of this word. The second, the third uh, meaning, for example, of kawthar is whoever has been given wisdom, may yu'til hikmata faqad utiya khayran kathira. Whoever has been given wisdom, according to some of the interpretations, that wisdom is al-kawthar. 
and the fourth thing is the Holy Quran and all its merits. This is Al Kawthar as well. Allama Taba Tabai says, hold on a second. All these interpretations that are not evidence based from hadith. He says, what does the last ayah of the surah talk about? Inna shani aka huwal abtar. It is your enemy who's got his progeny cut off. Therefore, Al Kawthar here necessarily must relate to progeny. See, it's a very rational approach to the surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Verily, we have given you abundance. And because we have given you abundance, make sure you pray and you give a sacrifice. In contrast, it is your enemy whose progeny has been cut off. Meaning that last ayah is a refutation to those who are saying that the Holy Prophet does not have a progeny. Therefore, necessarily and logically, al kawthar must relate to progeny. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have given you an abundance of good in Kawthar, it must be one of the children of the Holy Prophet from whose progeny continues. It wasn't the sons of the Holy Prophet. It wasn't the other daughters of the Holy Prophet. It had to be Fatima al Zahra, Salamullah alayha. Allahumma Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa Ajil Farajahum. Now, inshallah, let's move quickly to the next ayah. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ This fa in this ayah can be translated as consequently and therefore. Now, because we have given you, Ya Rasulullah, an abundance of good, therefore it necessitates that you do two things. This is the fa. Consequently, therefore, and then. Ya, ya Allah, what should Rasulullah do? فَصَلِّ Make sure you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure you give a sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is instructing the Holy Prophet. That any bounties, any goodness that you see come, that comes to your life, be it in the form of awladu salih, righteous offspring, or in terms of your wealth, or in terms of your health, or in terms of peace and security, whatever goodness you find in your life, you must adopt two practices in your life. One is to recite salah as a gesture of showing thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, my respected brothers and sisters, in Surah Al-Nasr, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing that miraculous event where most of so many Muslims were joining the folds of Islam. After so much struggle and persecution as the Muslims were, all of a sudden people in flocks were joining Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the Holy Prophet, don't you see this miracle that's happening? From all the struggles that you had, now people are joining Islam in, num in so many big numbers. Therefore, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ To show your thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To show that now your project has become successful. Do tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say subhanallah, subhanallah. Do the hamd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And do istighfar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a gesture to show thanks. The same recipe is mentioned here in this surah. That because we have given you a special blessing, an abundance of good in Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha, make sure you adopt two practices in your life. Salah, which contains tasbih, which contains hamd, which contains subhan and tahmid, and uh, uh, astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayh. Make sure you continue praying, which is one's relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, make sure you give a sacrifice. You offer a sacrifice. This is the message from this surah. What is this sacrifice? Nahar, which is the unique word used in this surah and not in not, not, not any other surah. Nahar literally means the throat or the neck of an animal. You know, sometimes when we have a blessing that comes in our lives, in our traditions we have sacrificed an animal. This is it, showing thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure you sacrifice an animal. But what happens when you sacrifice an animal? What are you doing with the meat? You distribute this meat or the flesh of this animal to those who are needy, those who require it, to the poor people. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, as a gesture of thanks for any blessing that you find in your lives that has come from me, 
Number one, make sure you recite your salah, number one. And secondly, do not forget and be constantly concerned about the welfare of people around you. Salah and a practical manifestation of showing your concern about those around you. Meaning, share the blessing that God has given you with others. Salah alone is not enough to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore we find the Holy Quran, my respected brothers and sisters, Salah and Zakat are constantly coupled in the Holy Quran. One is to show your thanks directly to the giver, the mun'im. And secondly, show me a practical manifestation of your thanks by sharing the blessings with those who need it around you. A message first and foremost to the Holy Prophet of Islam and in extension to those who follow the lifestyles of the Holy Prophet. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa Ajil Farajahum. And inshallah, the last ayah, qu very quickly, thank you so much for your patience. I know it's not the most uh, spiced up subject, but inshallah, thank you for your patience. The last ayah, ayah number three, is Inna Shani Aka Huwal Abatar. Two words in this last ayah, again, are uniquely only found in Surah Al Kawthar. This is a mock, this is a taunt that a person gives to the Holy Prophet of Islam, the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we have been discussing in the Jum'ah khutbahs as well, my respected brothers and sisters, in Surah Al-Humaza, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a very strong warning to anyone who mocks, who taunts, who slanders, who gossips, who breaks the reputation of any person in society. This is وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ humazatin lumaza. All these things, mocking, taunting, backbiting, gossiping, slandering and so on. If that individual who is a victim of all these things is a mu'min, the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more severe. Imagine if the Holy Prophet of Islam is a recipient of these taunts and the mocks and the slandering from the community. Imagine how much the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be on these individuals. Therefore, we find in the Holy Quran that whenever a person would accuse the Holy Prophet of Islam, immediately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would intervene. A zero tolerance policy to anyone accusing my beloved. When people would say to the Holy Prophet, you are not a messenger. What message are you talking about? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal, وَإِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Verily, with a lot of emphasis, you are one of the messengers. When someone would come to tell the Holy Prophet, for example, that you are a poet, whatever you are reading to us is simply poetry that you have learned from your forefathers. Allah would intervene straight away. وَمَا عَلَّمْنَاهُ الشِّعْرَ وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لَهُ we have not taught this messenger any poetry. And it does not befit a messenger of God to recite poetry. Zero tolerance policy to anyone who would talk about the Holy Prophet. They would accuse the Holy Prophet of being majnoon, insane. Imagine how much the Holy Prophet of Islam would, would have to tolerate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would immediately intervene. وَمَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ no, by the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are you not majnoon? Similarly, when people would mock the Holy Prophet of Islam that it is your progeny that has been cut off, Allah immediately intervenes and says, Inna shani'aka huwal abtar. Verily, it is your enemy who is the one who has been cut off. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. ما صلي على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم. I just wanted to share with yourselves one of the statements from a very prominent Sunni scholar who I had mentioned, Fakhr al Razi, in his Tafsir al Kabir. When he comes to this particular part, it's quite interesting that they are very picky when it comes to the small, beautiful linguistic miracles of the Holy Quran. But the more obvious points, 
somehow they are not, uh, you know, mentioned too well. However, Fakhr Razi giving him, you know, the due credit, he says this in his tafsir. He says that the third statement in this surah, that inna shaniyaka huwa al-abtar, has been revealed, I'll just re uh, read exactly what it says, that the third statement in this surah, the third ayah in this surah has been revealed to reject those who criti criticize the Holy Prophet of Islam for his lack of progeny. Therefore, the meaning of this surah is that Allah shall give him a generation which will remain stable throughout all the ages. So he does admit that this is a surah that is directly related and referenced to the progeny of Rasulullah. And then he continues, and consider this, he says, that although a number of the Ahlul Bayt have been martyred, obviously their meaning of Ahlul Bayt is different, he says, although a number of the members of the Ahlul Bayt have been martyred, the world is full of them. The world is replete with them. Whereas from the Umayyads and the enemies of Rasulullah, there remains no mentionable figure in the world. So, great confessions. Then, behold and see how many of the great men of leadership, such as Baqir, such as Sadiq, such as Rida, are found amongst them. So, it leaves you almost no doubt that if you're a person who approaches Surah al kawthar without any preconceived ideas, without any biases, you will come to the conclusion that this kawthar refers to none other than Fatima al-Zahra, Salamullah alayha, Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. My respected brothers and sisters, it was only a few months after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that his most beloved succumbed to the greatest oppression from the so-called companions of Rasulullah. How would have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with these people who have oppressed the beloved of Rasulullah? When Allah had a zero tolerance policy to anyone who even verbally accused Rasulullah, how would have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reserved his wrath for those who have physically oppressed and assaulted the beloved daughter of Rasulullah? Inshallah, we want to recite a few minutes of uh, musibah, a few minutes of just uh, mentioning the last few moments of the beloved life of Fatima al-Zahra, salamullah alayha. I would kindly request all of you, my respected brothers and sisters, to please try and keep our hajat in mind. It is a very special time reciting the musibah of Zahra Salamullah Alayha and undoubtedly, undoubtedly, we know that the attention of our present holy Imam is on those who have soft hearts for his beloved mother. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. Umma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajam sallallahu alayka ya Rasool Allah. First send our salams to Rasool Allah. Then we send our salams to all the members of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. Sallallahu alaykum ya Ahl Bayt al-Nubuwa. As-salamu alayki. أيتها الصديقة الشهيدة. Where do we send our hearts tonight? Should we face Baqi or should we face the glory of Rasul Allah? May Allah's peace and blessings be upon you. Our dear lady Fatima, Al Maghsubatu Hakuha, the one whose rights were usurped, Al Maksuratu Dilluha. Peace be upon you, O oh, the one whose ribs were broken. 
Our salams to you about whom Rasulullah used to say, كلما أشتقت إلى رائحة الجنة رسول الله used to constantly say that whenever I craved for the fragrance of paradise شممت رائحة ابنتي فاطمة I used to smell the fragrance of my daughter فاطمة we want to try and remember the last moments between Amir al Mu'mineen and his beloved wife Fatima al-Zahra. The only comfort that Amir al Mu'mineen had, his only support. Let's imagine the moments when Zahra was breathing her last. Her eyes closed and Amir al Mu'mineen sitting by her side. Looking at the face of Zahra. This is the same face about whom Amir al Mu'mineen used to say, Walaqad anduru ilayha. Whenever I looked at the face of Zahra, Fatan kashifu anni al ghumum wal ahzan. All my worries and sorrow would disappear now perhaps for the last time the hadith says Amir al mumineen calls out to his beloved wife ya Fatima Kalimini talk to me O oh Fatima فَأَنَا إِبْنُ عَمِّكَ عَلِيُّ بْنُ أَبِي طَالِبِ I am your Ali, talk to me, O oh Fatima. فَفَتَحَتْ عَيْنَيْهَا فِي وَجْهِهِ Zahra opens her eyes and sees the face of Amir al Mu'mineen. Wabakat wabaka. Tears start flowing down the cheeks of Zahra. Amir al Mu'mineen begins crying. And then he asks Zahra, Why are you crying, oh Fatima? Zahra replies, I am crying because of what's going to happen to you, O oh Ali, after I go. Very painful to Amir al Mu'mineen. Ya Ali, hannitni wa ghassilni wa kaffinni billayl. Ya Ali, why are you requesting this, Ya Fatima? For I don't want those who have hurt me, who have usurped my rights, who have attacked my muhsin, to attend my funeral. This is the daughter of Rasulullah. And then Zahra says to Amir al Mu'mineen, Ya Ali, wa alayka min ba'di al Hassan wal Hussein. Ya Ali, please look after Hassan and Hussein when I'm gone. Fa innahuma min ba'di yatima. They will become orphans after I go. It was only a few days ago that they lost their grandfather and tonight they're going to lose their mother at this stage we say to our present holy imam ya sahib al zaman our condolences to you ya sahib al zaman so much care and concern zahra had for hassan and hussein but what would the condition of zahra have been when she sees the dead body of hassan being pierced with arrows what would the condition of zahra have been when she sees the beloved body of Imam al Hussein laying on the plains of Karbala. How would have Zahra been when she saw someone sitting on the chest of Imam al Hussein? Ajarakallah, ya sahib al zaman. 
ألا لعنة الله على القوم الظالمين وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون ما تمي حسين يا حسين يا حسين हंसते रहे फातिमा रोती रहे कल मगो हंसते रहे फातिमा रोती रहे कल मगो हंसते रहे फातिमा रोती रहे हर चलते दरवाजे तले सिस्कियां लेती रही हाय माँ ज़ैनब की कल मगो हँसते रहे फातिमा रोती रहे कल मगो हँसते रहे फातिमा रोती रही इतनी बेबस थी मदीने में नबी की दुखते जलता दरवाजा किसी ने ना उठाया के हाय कैसा था सितम रखे कुरान पे कदम आ गए घर में शकी कल मगो से ते रहे फाते मारो मारो ताने सुनते थे ये बाजार में लोगों से ली इसने मारा था हमारे बुजुर्गों को कभी हमने यूं बदला लिया बदल जहरा को किया कुछ न कर पाया दी فاتح مارو تیر جیسے قصاب زبیہ کو لیے جاتے ہیں ایسے حیدر کو لئیں کھینچ کے لے آتے ہیں آگے آگے ہیں علی پیچھے پیچھے وہ چلی جو ہے زخموں سے بھری کل مگو ہستے رہے فاتمہ روتی رہی کل مگو ہستے رہے فاتمہ روتی رہی یاد جب آتا ہے دل ہوتا ہے پارا پارا कैसे हंसने ने की मादर को नहीं ने मारा खून आँखों से बहा सिर्फ या मेहदी कहा और ज़मीन पर बुगिरी कल मगो हँसते रहे आते मारो بیٹھ کر پیتی ہوں مشکل سے نماز شب بھی پھر بے عباس کی خلقت کی دعا بھولی نہیں تا 
السلام عليك يا حسن المجتبى السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله الحسين وعلى تسعة المعصومين من ذرية الحسين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الحجة المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجك وسهل الله تعالى مخرجك وظهورك ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل يا ربي على محمد وآله الطاهرين <تصفيق> 